Welcome to Cloud Foundry Summit. And thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. thank you for being a sponsor. <laughs> so you're new to the community, but I thought it would be a good opportunity for everyone here to hear a little bit about what Dell's been working on. One of the most fascinating things that I learned last week is the transformation journey that Dell's been going on internally. So Cody, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the Agile Transformation Initiative and the journey that Dell's been going on and how Cloud Foundry's played a part in that. Sure. So we've, we started an initiative a couple of years ago to focus on our deployment process, to focus on our end-to-end -end delivery cycle with our applications. Um, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of areas that needed, needed improvement. Uh, we started with the process side of the, you know, side of the equation, where they, we started structuring the teams, looking at the teams, thinking about being more agile. We, we had some structural changes within the, within the teams. We look, started looking at co-location. We started doing all of these, these agile-like things that you'll, you know, you'll read about or maybe you've already done. <clears throat> what we learned is, you know, as you start doing that, especially in a, an organization as large as ours, where we have, you know, we have around 2,500 applications, we have thousands of developers, some of these applications are legacy, been out there for 20 years. Some of them are brand new. That we learn that there's really not a, you know, a silver bullet or a single solution that, that would work, that, that would apply to all of these different teams. So last year, I started developing some capabilities targeted at specific parts of the, the, the delivery cycle. So we, for example, we started looking at making sure we had consistent build build automation in place for each of our applications. We started looking at automation around provisioning of our, of our, in, our servers and our infrastructure. We looked at a lot of test automation. We built frameworks around the functional regression in the end test automation. We also you know, looked at deployment automation, and we had a lot of successes there. The problem is that these were all individual capabilities, and we really didn't have an end-to-end -end solution. So even though we did have improvements, for example, in one space we had, we reduced their deployment time by 284%. Um, so you know, that was a big win for them. However, it, it was limited up to, from dev to, to our staging environments. It didn't include production. So we're, we started looking at you know, how, uh, how, can we, how can we complete this picture? And the mentality we had was, well, we're going to build these capabilities. And we're going to accommodate whatever applications need. They come to us with their requirements. We will make sure that, that we accommodate you know, their, their technical, technical needs, you know, whether it's dependent, you know, specific infrastructure needs, whether it's middleware needs, whatever it is. And we, again, we made some progress there. Well, now we, we're, we're to the point to where realizing that that isn't really scalable, especially when we talk about, the, you know, again, the size of the organization that we have. So we started looking at, we, we, we met with Pivotal. We started looking at Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry had a lot of capabilities within it that were missing in our current solution. For example, blue-green deployments or zero downtime deployments. Um, one of the biggest ones was environment parity. You know, so now you have your, your dev environments, your integration environments, your production environments all looking the same. So what, you know, in the previous earlier presentation, you know, it worked in dev, why not in production? Well, this is, this is one of the, the issues that we had that we were trying to solve. So we brought in, you know, so we, we, we started an engagement, started having the discussions around December of last year. We kicked off a formal, formal dojo um, a couple of months ago. It lasted six weeks. During that dojo, we were able to deploy three different foundations. Um, we deployed them. Can we talk a little bit? Yeah, let's yeah, talk a little bit about, about the implementation. The I think implementation. we have a slide to show yeah. um, to show what you've implemented, which I think is let's talk a little bit about the foundations you've deployed and sure. on the different infrastructures. I think we have a slide. Maybe, maybe not. Well, while we're, while we're waiting for that, I think one of the the key things to point out is while we did work and we are working with Pivotal on the implementation, we're not working with a commercial distro. Uh, so this is an open source version that, that we're working with and have opted to, to go with. Interesting. Absolutely. So what we've done, what, what you see is a, it's a high level view on purpose. Um, 
But we wanted, we wanted something that, we wanted to prove in this pilot or in this dojo that we could have you know, flexibility in, in the infrastructure that we worked on, flexibility in the types of applications that, that we wanted hosted in this platform. And so we, you know, we, we started with building, we built three foundations, two of them on Azure, one prod, one non-prod, I'm sorry, on, on, on vSphere, one prod, one non-prod. We built an Azure instance out on, on, out on the public, public cloud. And we've got a variety of different applications that we've deployed to these clouds. So we had some .NET applications, some Java applications, some applications that were new, some applications that existed for years. So we completed a six-week dojo. Um, the, we, we had a, an executive summary of that, review of that last week. It was very positive. We're now putting together a plan moving forward. We have inception starting next week. So we're very excited about this, this solution. And so just a quick question on, um, you chose both on-prem and public cloud. Was that purposeful? It is. Again, we just wanted some, some flexibility there. Um, there. There are some instances where, obviously, we want to keep it on-prem. Um, maybe a number of dependencies that we have, calls back and forth. There are some applications that are very lightweight, very independent. You know, it's not worth the cost of us maintaining it. Um, so so we, again, we wanted the flexibility. We'll be rolling out that plan you know, here in the next couple of months to, to have a plan for our entire application set that we have. That's exciting. So as Dell has gone to go, undergone this transformation and, and you're deploying Cloud Foundry and, and moving workloads to it, how has this changed the way your organization thinks about technology? And how has this extended to both um, hiring, recruiting, and, and really the teams you've built around this? So, so internally, you know, this, this platform is a, it's an opinionated platform, right? It, it requires specific things from your application. What I had before and what we have now are like 2,500 opinionated applications. <laughs> and we have, you know, since dev today, the development teams are, are required to manage their applications, you know, in, especially when issues come up. You know, troubleshooting deployment issues, troubleshooting configuration, then now we have thousands of opinionated people. <laughs> so, opinionated people? Really? <laughs> so, so what this, this platform brings is, you know, it, it is requiring, you know, some consistency and some standardization of our applications. And it's the way that dev thinks about it is, is slightly different now. Now dev can focus on development. They're not having to, to focus on the platform. Um, so that's internally, that's, that's one of the biggest changes. As far as you know, hiring and, and retaining talent, uh, you know, I'm involved in some, some HR recruiting efforts every year, and I've been doing it for, for several years now. In the spring semester, and even in the last fall, we're starting to talk to some college, you know, some, some candidates that are starting to ask us about cloud technologies. And they're, you know, they're, we have some opinionated, you know, college students. But, but more importantly, they're, they're looking at, you know, to, 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 to jump on the latest technology, to jump on, you know, some of these things that are exciting and forward thinking. Like Cloud Foundry. Like Cloud Foundry. So, you know, just, just, you know, just by the definition of what it is, just from how we're, how we're implementing it, how we're selling it to internally to our customers, how we're how we're advertising it with, with our recruits is, is definitely changing the talent and the, the dynamics of, of the organization that we have. I would also say that while you, it helps us to recruit, you've also got the existing people who are there. And so you're always going to have your curmudgeons who are not going to get into it. But then you've got this, this stack of people who are chomping at the bit to do something really exciting and really new. And those are the people who, whose passion gets ignited by something like this. They see OK, we're going to something more modern. We're going to something that, that I've always wanted to try out. And I, say, I think it really helps to motivate and retain those people as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is probably something everyone here is thinking about today as well. Um, on that point, and I think this is really a, kind of a, a great theme that's been throughout the week around transformation, is how has this changed the way you think about your customers and the challenges that your customers are undergoing? I think one thing is it's given us both experience and empathy for what they're going through. So we can understand 
theoretically about when we come to preach digital transformation, but if we ourselves have gone through it, we have a much more realistic understanding of what it's about. And I think the way to look at it is digital transformation is not waterfall. I think what Cody was talking about is we've had a bunch of different efforts, and that's not just because we're disorganized, or maybe we are, but that's a different <laughs> subject. Uh, it, by having these different uh, initiatives that you're doing, that allows you to move more quickly. So same thing with, uh, as we work with our Cloud Foundry implementation, it's not a let's, let's clear the decks, let's go whole hog on this, it's let's complete a six month, uh, sorry, six week dojo. And also rather than looking at, well, let's refactor everything we have and start from, from scratch, it's a replatforming to begin with. Now, of course, we would love to get to where we're naturally uh, writing in microservices and deploying that way, but it's very much a step-by-step uh, -step process. And that's one thing that it helps us to understand when we go to our customers, that it isn't a, a binary switch over to, to the new digital world. It's, it's coming in, it's helping to, to address these cultural issues and, and getting people started and getting people iterating. Which is such an exciting time. And as I think we're all aware, 2016 is going to be an amazing year for Dell. From your perspective, given all the caveats with what is public and what's not, what is the vision for Dell Technologies taken into all of these considerations? The transformation journey, Cloud Foundry, your vision for the future. What does that look like? And, and what do you see, where do you see Dell going for the future? Well, I think, and you alluded to Dell Technologies, or your name Dell Technologies, which will be the name of the, the organization when, when the... Um, the acquisition slash merger closes, but I think what it does is it provides us a continuum of services and, and corp uh, companies that we can use to better serve our customers. So whereas Dell ourselves, as, as Cody's talking about, we may be back here a little bit further, more, more like our traditional customer base. We're now acquiring uh, capabilities, say through VMware, through um, Pivotal that helped to put us out on the on the much more at the leading edge And so by taking that information we can then stream it back and provide it to some people who are who are closer to where we are and, and maybe this sort of customer base that EMC also serves as well So it gives us just a, a, a better uh, Breadth of understanding and of viewpoints and then allowing that to to come back and, and uh, help folks Maybe a little bit further back in the chain well, your portfolio is certainly going to be amazing following the acquisition and with the journey that you're on. I'm excited to see where Dell's going to go in 2016. Me too. <laughs> so with that, and with time left, because I know we're the last one of the evening, Nick, I think we will turn this back over to you and let everyone get on to happy hours. Thank you very much. Awesome.